Hello there. Thank you for joining me. It's Infinity here. It is 10 12 2020. It is 1 11 a.m. 11 seconds in. And we are doing the very last of our oracle for the Stargate for uh, the date of 10 20. I'm super excited about this. Uh, we've done nine leading up to this. This is going to be for our last one. All of these have been just, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That's the way they've been. And we are at this. Wait, sorry. We are at this last one and um, I'm just wondering, I had to go back to that last one and, and move forward on that one. Anyway, I'm getting distracted still thinking about the last one. I got to go back on that one. Anyway, here we are. This one is... Um, for the last, for the very last one. And we're gonna see which deck we're gonna use. <laughs> I'm so distracted with it, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Going to see which which one we're going to use. Okay, so we're not, I know we're not using the Dragon Fae. And I keep kind of bouncing back and forth between these two. It's kind of driving me nuts. Which one are we using? Okay. We are going to use, whoa. The Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle for our number 20 day. Our last day of the Stargate. So it's the 10th day of the Stargate. I'm being guided to make these little piles here. Okay, got five piles here. I know you can't see all of them. Sorry about that. It's just the way it's got to be right now. Okay, feeling this center pile. So we're eliminating all of these right off the bat. Just this tiny little pile left over. This is a brand new deck for me, so it's really still quite <laughs> stiff and sticky. Once upon a time, I would have heard that well before I said it. <laughs> I'm, I'm innocent. <gasps> oh, that's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Keeping it real, people. Keeping it real. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Okay, let's see. Oh, 
when you notice you've been contorted in not such a great way for way too long and then your joints like I hate you <laughs> sorry I've been distracted ow oh, that's... okay Okay, I keep going back to the same one. Top left. So here it is. I I don't even know. I can't. I I couldn't even imagine because I've only seen a few of these cards and here we go. <gasps> Card number 18. Scared to fly, the right moment, sensing out the right timing. And this is actually, I actually have seen this card before. This is one of the few cards that I've seen. Um, and look at all, look at that October feel. <gasps> oh, earlier before, are they reminding me? So we have the 18th again. Okay, okay, okay. They reminded me earlier, I thought of, of um, Halloween, but Sam Hain, it's a very um, um, special day for the Fae for connecting with them. Um, so when the veil's thin out, obviously, it's a very spiritual day. Um, Amplifying the energy from the 18th for the full moon. Just saw your teen again. For the full moon. Even though this is for the 20th. They're showing me this like bouncing energy. So it'd be like we started off the month with the full with the full moon on the first. We're going to have the new moon on the 16th. And then we're going to have a full moon on the 31st, which is Sam Hain. Um, Your fairy blood will sing at this time and you will have great insights into your ancestry, even your own fairy bloodline. It's a Gaia portal. So there's that. Card number 18, Scared to Fly. My broken glasses. Here we go. The right moment, sensing out the right timing. New life is coming. Spring is stirring. The sap is rising through the barren branch onto which she clings. And this fairy is longing to let go and fly forth to tell that spring has come at last. But she cannot until she feels the life force swell irreversibly. And though she can feel it coming, the time is not quite right yet. This is a card that indicates it is almost time and that you must be ready for when the time is right. The fairy being in this beautiful card is awaiting the energetic sign and holding on until magic itself signals to her it is time to take flight. Though it seems a small and lonesome figure, she can and will fly and alert all to the coming of the green time of leaf bud, but for the time being, the bear tree seems like the only available shelter in this landscape, and it is. 
if you take the limited view, but who knows what lies beyond when the right time comes. Her flight will activate change and bring leaf, bud, and new life to all. If she times this right, all will be well, and the seasons will continue their turning. One beautiful aspect is that she is alone in this timing. She must rely on her fairy sensitive senses, her fairy sensitive senses, and heed no voice but her own and that of the natural world. She has direct communication with the planet and when the time is right, the breeze too will gather force and support her in sending her work and message out into the world. This card is about suspending activity and being in the moment, awaiting the right moment, knowing that when you are in that flow, all will unfold perfectly. Just by being where we are, we may understand so much of where we have been and where we will go. And we can certainly refine what it is that we want, value and desire. Think of the, uh, sorry, I'm trying to say this word. Think of the chrysalis hanging seemingly static from the branch, fragile and mysterious. It does nothing but become itself. Become who you are by telling, sorry, become who you are by being in this chrysalis-like state by awaiting and by awaiting the right moment to emerge and share. Just like this fairy, transformation is inner before it is manifested outwardly into the world. You must wait for the right time to be, sir. You must wait for the time to be right. Simply by doing this, you will affect change. Your energy itself will change the situation and your reaction is an indication of great wisdom. It is hard not to react or to project our fears onto others, to blame and take everything personally. Very hard. <laughs> Let us not underestimate the challenge of this card to wait for the right time, which is, of course, choosing to act with self-mastery is not passive. It requires rethinking and challenging and outmoded passive I'm sorry an outmoded conditioning that claims that only by rushing in can we activate our own impact and energy within a situation the wisdom very very challenging wisdom you are being required to show demonstrate learn and teach is unlike that which the world generally recognizes and respects it is a strength the power of endurance and seeming inaction of waiting internally there is great pressure to be active external create change but the energy of this card is inner mastery through demonstrating patience on a spiritual level, this can indicate the lesson of surrender. Mm. Once you understand the precious and timeless nature of being and the fact that time is not linear, you will move forward and into your strength and purpose in divine right timing. The fairy and nature will show you with a clear and natural sign of it is time. Oh goodness gracious. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> it is so good. Oh, it is just so perfect. It is so perfect for the last day of this stargate. Because I've been feeling this. And my new uh, par mission partner uh has been feeling this too because we're both doers and planners and schedulers and and deadline um workers and and 
we have had to not do what we have planned to do because we've needed to do other things and we have not felt that energy we felt this energy and we've been guided to do this instead of that and all of that makes perfect sense but but I had to to say we're you know don't don't do that today take a day off do this instead I'm gonna do that like we're just not bound to have to do's unless we decide and and we need to um know when the time is right to do certain things and when the time isn't right to do certain things and and listen to our inner guidance and our um and our outer guidance, our inner and our outer guidance when it comes to that, because they're both equally important. Even though this card says, you know, she, she is just, she's just her that she's listening to. Well, it also says that she's listening to nature and she's listening to, to mother earth and they're working together. So she's def she's not alone. She looks alone, but she's definitely not alone. And even though this talks about spring, what this is alluding to when it talks about spring, what I was seeing with this was the energies that we're, that we're cultivating now, we're planting these, these seeds at the, at, in, in the fall. So in the spring, they will rise. And that's what this is showing us. It's showing us, it's saying, oh, this is the end of, of, of winter and spring is coming. When it's saying, no, truly, this is, this is, this is where we are now. This is the beginning of, or this is like fall time, like the end of October and into November. And look at that full moon. It's about the full moon energy. It's about this, um, this boomerang energetic effect into 2021 um i'm feeling april i'm feeling april with this with this energy so so a lot of what is being worked on and figured out and and kind of set up now and um rethinking this whole thing this whole thing is about patience and planning and organizing and not doing certain things <clears throat> but doing other things and I went through that recently I was going to start this whole big project and then I was just guided to not do that and go back and take care of some other stuff that I had begun and clean stuff up and do more of kind of a nesting thing. I need to nest before I can birth. And so, um, and that feels very much what this energy is about for the collective, this like, I'm, I'm more internally working on things and figuring things out and, and seeing what happens in the actual reality that I'm living in and how that manifests and works out with everybody else and time goes on and we have full moons and new moons and stargates and, and all this good stuff. And so, and let's not forget, we recently had the equinox and that was a really big deal. It was a really big deal. And uh it's all about balancing it's all about um the yin the yang the light the dark the action the inaction the that's what this is this this is about to have the self-mastery not to do something 
is very challenging to not to react, to not to uh, grow impatient because you just want to move on and, and have the authority of your own self to say, no, I can put that off because I need to do this. That might be opening up the presence, but um, it's like opening up your birthday present six months before your birthday. It's like, that's great. You're getting birthday presents, but you're like, I'm still the same age for like six more months. <laughs> it feels weird. So in six months, do I get presents or what's happening here? Um, <laughs> that would be really weird. So we have to do things as we are ready for them. But at the same time, we need to not let our fears hold us back from doing things that we need to do. So it does become, again, that balancing act. Anyway, let's move on here to um, the divinatory meanings. It is time to sense the atmosphere and to wait for the right moment. It is not time to go when you are told by another, but when you know you are ready. It may look like hanging on or fear to others, but in fact, you need just a little more to support you, and then you can fly high. It is truly about sinking into lunar cycles and finding the right time for this venture to take flight. When planning this step, be sure to do it at the right time when the moon, the energies of nature herself, support moving forward. Learn more about the natural festivals and the lunar cycles and plan your step accordingly. Do not rush. Know that good things do take time and that slowly can indeed be a worthy way to work. Rushing can create dilemmas. So sense out what is right for you and get ready to fly higher than ever before. Woohoo! Okay, and then reverse meanings, because I like to go there. Wanting to rush the results, unsure of whether doing nothing is good enough, eager to get on with things, impatient for your time to come, unwilling to wait for the energy to be right for you to move forward again, seeing stasis as nothingness, unwillingness to let events unravel, a lack of faith and belief in divine right time. Mmm, that is such a big deal. Such a big deal. Needing to see the evidence of your own impact on a situation that may not require uh, that particular kind of involvement from you. Change for change's sake. Forcing an issue before it's time. So, being impatient, basically... <laughs> not willing to wait things out and let things naturally happen, needing to enforce your your yourself and your energy onto thing onto a situation or person or whatever. Um, so again, talking about the lunar cycles, talking about those um, festivals um, for connecting to the Fae, and the other realms and dimensions, the Gaia portals, the stargates, the timing of stargates, the timing of, of new moons, full moons, that sort of thing. I also heard again like eclipses and I felt like, like um, interesting energy, like eclipse and equinox energy at the same time. It was like going dark and at the same time, that that balance of that light and that dark on both sides um that sometimes we don't think about with the eclipse we just see the dark we don't see how there's the other side of the moon that's that's not dark and or the or when it's the equinox and there's that balance of light and dark in that daytime whereas with the with the eclipse there isn't that balance of of light and dark within our day and that's what the equinox is about it's having the equal daytime and nighttime so these 
the exact amount of daytime and nighttime to that day. And then, um, and then at the same time with, with the eclipse, it's just, it's, it's the sun going or, well, I'm, I was talking about lunar eclipse or solar eclipse too. So, so the, it's about the, the moon going dark or the sun going dark, but we're just seeing it from this perspective. From the other perspective, there's nothing dark about it. So that's something to consider. So with all of that said, Okay, so I'm just thinking I'm I'm not off somewhere else. I'm just getting I got pulled into we um getting the getting the art of for this this energy, this card for this day. Um and a lot of things are coming to me. Ooh. And I'm getting pretty tired. Okay, so there we go. I knew I was gonna, I knew it was where to find it. It just wasn't coming to me right there. <laughs> so, for October 20th, 2020, it's, it's really quite perfect. It is the art of surrender. That is our last art of for the stargate the art of surrendering oh my goodness wow that's perfect it's perfect perfect for the last day of the stargate perfect energy I don't really like that it's titled scared to fly I don't see why it's called that um, I guess if, if we're going off of the reverse meanings that could mean that but whatever um, card number 18 and that is the art of surrendering Wow, I am so excited. This is really, really exciting. And um, the one before it, Hideki's door, a knock at the door. I'm really spacing on what I picked or that I didn't pick the right art of for that. Now I'm wondering, did I even pick it? Like, I feels like a million years ago all of a sudden so I'm being guided to go here to kind of do it go in reverse style here and see what um Okay, so
Okay, yeah, I'm not sure if I went through this or if I got swept up in all this other stuff that came up with Hideki's door and I didn't get into it, but nevertheless, either way, we are going to go with this because this is what I'm being told for this card and for the, um, the 19th is going to be the art of change. Um, so yeah, the art, the art of change. Um, and then the 20th is, uh, um, <laughs> now I'm spacing on that. The art of, uh, surrender that's it they're like surrender yeah so the art of change the art of surrender in that order oh wow this is so good so good um change and surrender <gasps> ah, this is so exciting i'm so excited for this you guys oh my goodness and we're gonna be closing out our um our stargate with the with the art of surrender uh card number 18 this is really really powerful it has full moon energy it has the energy of eclipse it has the energy of um uh equinox it has the energy of 21 and and this 10 uh this 10 20 um 20 20 uh, has this mirrored effect into 21. And like I said, I'm feeling that April energy big time, um, that things are just going to be unfolding until the, the bud is, is ready to blossom, um, literally in the spring when so much is going to be uh, birthed actually, and we're still pregnant and, 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 and nesting and preparing and, and accepting change coming. It's just beautiful. Honestly, surrendering to the process. I can't with this. It's just too, too good. So anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully, um, you have watched all of these videos. If you have, thanks for watching all of these videos. Thanks for watching this unfold with me and, and, and being here for those silent moments. I don't edit this out because the numbers have to be what they are. For those of you paying attention, I don't point out every single thing that I'm seeing when I'm saying it or else that would get really annoying. Something for you to do for yourself, but um, but thank you for, for being here with me. I hope that you've been motivated to join me in the lives and they've become something really meaningful and powerful for you. We've only done them two days as of now, and they've been really awesome, really, really awesome. So that's why I'm so excited about this because it's only been a couple of days and it's just been so phenomenal and the energy has just been brilliant and I'm just so motivated more than ever for the future and all of this and sharing it with all of, of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. And 